You're such an asshole. So this is a uh, video number two uh, for client who paid for originals. And if, if you want to pay for an original, then because if I get paid and I got to do what the requests are that the people want me to do. But if you want to hear something, how do I get the girls? If you want to hear something different than that, I have a catalog, a backlog actually of original ideas. And this one's been on my mind, even though I think I've written about a little bit, but I was thinking about a little bit more. So let's put it to YouTube because no one reads anything anyway. <clears throat> so is this. Um, so uh, as Cappy moves, as the Voyager spacecraft goes into the Oort cloud and beyond the solar system, pioneering uh, new frontiers, um, I have been not even wrestling with, but as the data comes in, I'm just, I, I hate the sound. So I got to be an economist though. Can't be cynical. Can't be pessimistic. The data I'm getting, <clears throat> I'm pretty much convinced that, well, we know girls only have a fractional interest in men. But the real hard part is getting you guys, to, and it's a hard, hard, if not impossible, um, task to have you guys go against uh, what is essentially your biological hardwiring and your desires and your emotions and, and accept that fact. <clears throat> you, for two million years of human evolution, billion if you want to go back to the fact that all creatures want to procreate. Um, who knows, maybe you, you actually like girls, you want to have a family, or or the media and the television, you're an old soul. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to get the girls. And your screaming sex drives, uh, it all blinds you uh, to what is a, if you if you take the glasses off, a tremendous amount of empirical evidence that women just, they're just not that into you guys. And I've said before that now I'm kind of finally starting to understand. I don't agree. I think they could have done a hell of a better sales job of feminists or feminism or kind of where they're going, where they're coming from rather. Um, but at the same time, wish girls would just be more honest about it and say, well, we're really not that interested in you. And so what you have to do is, is look at behavior. So <clears throat> what I've found is is a damn near identical parallel behavior and, and corollaries between cartel economics and cartelish behavior and women's behavior. <clears throat> and I think having a lesson in understanding some basics about cartel economics and uh, drawing some some similarities, you might be able to see like, oh, we might be able to slap you up a bit in a little bit of sobriety. Like, yeah, okay, I know your entire existence has been to find a girls and have children before you're mortal. You shed your mortal coil. Um, <clears throat> but, but, but that may not be an option. And link to the, uh, down below is the link to the menu life without the opposite sex of which both men and women, at least half of you, by the time I'm dead, more than half of you are not going to have each other. Cause you're not going to want each other. Well, women won't want men anyway. That's what the day. Hey, don't get mad at me. That's the data. Don't get mad at me. I am merely the economist. I see the data, I report the data. And I'm trying to help out you girls so these guys don't bother you anymore, all right? Uh, so hopefully we can uh, uh, draw some lessons so you kind of maybe understand. And in understanding, you come to acceptance. And also, uh, you can't go into this blind. I'm not saying you can't find a girl. I'm just saying it's statistically difficult and unlikely. But in truly understanding the nature or the reality, <clears throat> the empirical reality that is before you, you will now start making choices and decisions that are uh, going to be more effective. And uh, there's no joke about it. Uh, you, this is this is not like oh, girls, ooh, box. It, it is your the number one investment you guys are going to make uh, in, in pretty much every measure: your finances, your time your emotional and psychological investment and being the economist, I want to make sure that you get the highest return on investment for those resource, those natural resources we were all born with. <clears throat> so you have a better life than us Gen X guys. And certainly better than your boomer dads who've been divorced three or four times by now. So, so I apologize for kind of the <clears throat> outline nature here um, of this, but I'm going to kind of follow my template. So I cover all my, my um, observations. Thank you. All right. So first let's do a real quick, uh, review 
of uh, cartels, right? So a cartel is just where a group of producers of something, usually a commodity, but not always, um, <clears throat> they get together and they say, we're going to do price fixing. We're going to limit the amount of cars we produce, oil we print off, silver we mine, whatever it is. And so we work less, but that drives up the price. So we'll pay more. Uh, we'll get, we'll earn more. There'll be more profits. So the most common one, I think most of you learned in high school economics, if they taught it right, is OPEC. So that's the uh, Organization for Petroleum Exporting Countries. I think it's 20 or so odd countries. <clears throat> and they get together and they say, okay, we have an agreement. And, and no different than a, a drug cartel. What, what are they selling? The commodity is drugs. Cartels form. There's teams that form. They say, okay, what are we going to do for pride? The mafia. And not, not to give it an illegal or a, a bad thing. It's not necessarily bad. Um, <clears throat> it, it lowers people's standards of living, but it is serving this. So there's economic interest. So it's not like, okay, they're running and gunning. This is not the, um, the, uh, drug cartels necessarily, but that's an example. All right. Or De Beers there. There's a one where all De Beers diamonds, they just, that's a monopoly basically. So you limit the supply and then, uh, oh my God, the price, and you saw this happen in the seventies during the oil embargoes. And so uh, that's what it is, right? But instead of oil, I'm <clears throat> I'm just the economist. Don't shoot me. The commodity that women control is sex. So what it is, terribly sorry. We could also say kindness, love, femininity, all of that fall under the umbrella. I'd, I'd throw that in there. But, and you know whose fault that is? That the commodity is sex? It's not their fault. It's your fault, guys. Why? Well, it's not even your fault. It's God or nature's fault because they programmed you that way. That's that's what you want. It's the only reason we're here. The only reason we have electricity. But I don't need to go down that road again. <clears throat> but it, and then this is not to say women are all ladies of the evening. It's just, just the analogy. Right? But what women offer men is sex. We could also say progeny passing on children genetics. But that that's what we're all interested in sex. I was on Erica Shanta Williams, Erica's Classy Climb the channel. She's female, obviously, <clears throat> and a fair amount of females. And then something about the women. Well, what do guys want? Sex. <laughs> Wait, sex. And I've said it before. The number one commodity in the world is sex because that's what the number one commodity half the population wants. And not only wants like chocolate. I mean, everybody wants chocolate ice cream. Who doesn't want chocolate ice cream? Men will kill for sex. Men will enslave their lives. They will produce millions of dollars over the course of their life, in today's dollars anyway, just to get a little bit of box. And so it is the most valuable commodity in the world. And uh, it, we, we pay for it sometimes. In, well, in the olden days, oh, I'll give you three mules and a cow or, uh, you know, hair, you have to provide hair. So there was more of a trans, transactional, trans, transactional nature. Uh, even up until certainly the 60s, it was like, well, the man will be the, the breadwinner and bring home the bacon. We'll take care of that, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so it's not too far off from us just buying Barrels of oil from Iran or Iraq, right? But the difference between, say, uh, a female cartel uh, limiting the supply of sex, and I would say female attention because, as you guys know, we should lump in femininity. Let's, let's lump it all in because, as you guys may or may not know, the number one thing in Vegas on the Strip is not ladies of the evening. It is the girlfriend experience, and we've kind of seen that uh, that's corroborated with the rise of the fans girl, fa only fan girls, where it's not just prawn. You can get that all over the place. It's that one on one. So there's a little bit more than just mere sex. <clears throat> um, but the difference between sex as a commodity or femininity as a commodity and oil is that it's it's a a conscious versus unconscious cartel. OPEC is conscious. Uh, the 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 mafios. All right, we guys, the guys from Chicago, under Joe Pacino and Billy Barbaruni and Vinny Vinny the Axe, who runs Miami. We're all gonna agree. And actually, that was Lucky Luciano. Uh, if you're watching Mobsters, I believe that was a Christian Slater film. <clears throat> uh, that was what Lucky Luciano did. Like it's stupid us fighting. Let's form a cartel. We'll form the mafia. I'm sure some of the drug cartels done the same thing. Why are we shooting each other? Why don't we just work together? 
And so uh, there is a formal agreement, a conscious agreement of different entities, different producers, of whatever product it is. <clears throat> we're all going to get together. We're going to be on the same page. We're not going to compete. We're going to work together. And we're not going to kill each other, too, <laughs> in case it's an illegal thing. And we're also going to limit the supply so we can maximize our profit as a team. Now, you'd say, well, women, they don't form cartels. And it's like, yeah, you're not. But then here comes tribalism. <clears throat> where you can see different people of different groups kind of forming an allegiance regardless in the olden days for survival purposes. But for women, especially because their survival and their standards of living so heavily depended upon it, if they just gave away the sex from free and it would be uh, ubiquitous, it'd be all over the place, well, then men would not produce the resources or work as hard or be as committed or, or, or work out as much, become a, a masculine man as they wanted. <clears throat> so over time, unconsciously and perhaps not so unconsciously through direct conversation and communication, women have formed an unofficial or unconscious cartel. Now, as time has gone on, it has become more and more formalized or crystallized, right? In the olden days, it would have just been females talking. Your mother would grab you aside. Your grandma, here's how the birds and the bees work, and here's how you get a man, and you better support da 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 da. But what you really do is you want Heinrich. He's in the army, and man, if you could get him. But then you go to to, to Poindexter over there, who's the lawyer. <clears throat> That's the good man. So it was communicated, but not really with the printing press. But I I starkly remember. And who knows how long ago it was, but the women's ma girls' magazines, not even women's magazines, girls' made like Teen and Cosmo and 17 and 16 or whatever the other ones were. Glamour. Uh, before the internet, there was uh, not necessarily conscious, but there was a, a consolidation, a, um, <clears throat> uh, a nucleus of general common thought rules to kind of follow whether they were right or not whether they're based in reality or not that has nothing to do with it but there was kind of a a proto certainly a predecessor to female dating strategy if you uh just read that or go there and take a look at it they're basically larping and and uh, plagiarizing the red pill like 15 years later like good going girls <laughs> hey you're finally catching up but that that as media became more common and standardized, girls kind of had uh, not the template, but the beginnings of, of a little bit more of a, a clear cartel being formed. Certainly books might have, you know, you go back to the, the feminist days. There were some foundational books that would provide an op or like some general rules, general philosophy that future generations of women would follow. And now you have the internet and yeah, okay. It's, it is all but a cartel in name because now you have communication and the a perfect example on the internet would be female dating strategy where it's like, this is what we're doing. We are acting as a, as a group of women. We will engage in these behaviors and strategies. And again, I don't necessarily um, fault them for it. Of course you want to maximize your rate of return. <clears throat> you want to get the most out of a guy. Uh, in terms of resources, I don't mean that necessarily in money, though certainly that too, but you know, you girls, you know what, <laughs> you got to make the investment. <laughs> we're not, we're not hewers, but you better take us to dinner. It's like, how about we see if you look like what your pictures look like on the dating profiles. Um, but you know, also, uh, strategies on how to have, uh, the position of power over the guys, uh, all you could go ahead and, and everything to, to, to women's advantage. And certainly now uh, with everything going online, girls can fall into coalesces. I'm sure there are very popular YouTubers out there, girls giving dating advice, marriage advice. Uh, and so now unconscious, uh, but approaching a, a, a conscious Borg-like communal entity, uh, this cartel that, that existed through maybe at a tribalistic level back in the day is now crystallized. Almost. It is very concrete. It is very clear. And so uh, also you throw in, <clears throat> you can kind of see evidence of this. Once online dating occurred and profiles and um, Tinder and, and all that other stuff, women had access to all the men in the world, presumably expressing interest over the internet, not actual real interest, but um, expressing interest. 
And so they could, uh, in addition now, oh God, darn it. I lost my train of thought there. Uh, it, the, the internet not only kind of formalized this cartel and kind of globalized it as well, but it also exposed women to all the world's buyers. Like uh, OPEC, it's a given. You can you could sell your oil globally. Right? And it's the same thing here now. So now here's the point I was going to make is now they will sell only to the absolute highest bidder. Right. So that's that's so now you have a much larger market. It's global. They have total information or, or, or near total information. <clears throat> and they're like, dang, those people over there are going to do what? They're going to pay that much. Here's my standard. You got to be Chad. You got to be a 10. Right. And that's again, don't shoot the economist. Have we seen the dating profile data? What? 80 percent of men are unattractive. Have we said, I got standards, bro, and we do the math and all that. Go to Fresh and Fit. You, admittedly, that's selection bias with the girls they're bringing on there. But their expectations are absolutely delusional. Right? Um, but <clears throat> neither here nor there. The point is, whether it was unconscious back in the day or borderline Borg-like consciousness cartel we have today, women's behavior, it's, it's been somewhat consistent, but just maybe now turned up to nine or 10. In the olden days, you'd have the mother hen, right? Certainly in my day, you'd, you'd be out there at a bar or whatever, talking to a girl. Here comes her fat girlfriend yanking her away. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. I thought there was something wrong or they had to go. And, and now as an older man, I realized, no, that's it. That's natural behavior. They are trying to keep the price up. Maybe unconsciously, maybe through jealousy, but they're trying to keep it up. Same thing with slut shaming. Ladies, don't blame us guys for the slut shaming. OK, go on as much slut walks as you want. And, and we are all for you promoting promiscuity. All right. But you want to talk about who does the accusation of the S word? It's your fellow sister. Why? They want to keep you from flooding the market. Uh, and nearly and effectively in nearly all of the Western world, I think some other worlds as well, uh, prostitution is illegal. Right. Why? But what we can't have because I got news for you paying directly for it, seeking arrangement, going out to Pahrump, going to um, Amsterdam, wherever else it might be legal, is way cheaper than what was usually the cost associated with it. Marriage, a lifetime commitment, alimony, whether you're supporting a family or divorced or married, I mean, alimony, like you're supporting that person. Paying for that, like a lifetime supply of a lifetime length of support. And you're like, what? $300 for one evening? All right, cool. And I never see you again? All right. Oh, women got in and they knew that was a bad thing. They're like, no way. Mm -mm. <clears throat> I've often wondered about the uh, the pro-sex worker contingent of the feminist, it's like, uh, feminist side of things where it's like, yeah, as a libertarian, as, as truly free individuals, they're like, well, they could do their body, their choice. But then like, how do you square that with, like, do you, do you want the metaphorical price of sex to go down? Like, how do you, I'm very curious if some people are conflicted about that. But it, it is that those restrictions to supply have always been, you know, put a ring on it or nothing at all. Those restrictions to supply have always been there as a matter, of course, to keep society alive and functional. But now as time has gone on and, and now you have a global market, now the internet has given total, if not perfect information. <clears throat> and women can now sell to the highest bidder. Um, now it, it's it's turned up like you better not do the He better show up and pay for this. He better, and you may have noticed, we'll get to, to the data that bears this out. A lot of you guys aren't having sex. An increasing amount of women are not having sex, but I think the increase of men that are not having sex compared to was like three times as much. And so they're really getting picky. Why? Because they can be. They can be. They don't have to deal with you. They don't need you, which we're going to get to uh, later on. <clears throat> so you have now information turning this cartel up to nine and making a global one. Another thing about cartels is they're not terribly interested in their buyers, nor the commodity they sell. For example, drug dealers, um, they don't, maybe they do hate their clientele, but they're not, you know, they don't like them all that much either. They're probably indifferent towards you. If they cared about you, they wouldn't sell you drugs, right? 
<clears throat> but they, as long as you're going to buy the drugs, so like, okay, they don't really care about that afterwards. And they're not users themselves. Like they don't do their heroin. Hopefully not. At least good drug dealers don't do that. They're just selling it. And so it's kind of the same thing with like Iran, Iran, Saudi Arabia. Well, they're flooded with it. Yeah. It's in our backyard. Literally. We're not that obsessed about it, but you Americans and you Chinese and the Indians, all you people that got mechanized and industrialized economies, you sure like, you sure need this, what we got. <clears throat> so just as Iran is, is not all that interested in the best interests of the United States, it's also not all that interested in oil. And you could kind of see the same thing with gals. They form their cartel. They're not as interested in sex as you guys are. Now for the top, you know, top alpha, yes, the skewed dating market, which has been covered in the past. That 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 changes for tens. Everything I got to say here is for like linear nines and below, certainly linear eights and below. <clears throat> um, but girls, you know, this has been long. No girls just aren't that interested in sex. Saudi Arabia is probably not that excited about oil. Uh, and they're really, you know, not that interested in you. <laughs> The Saudis don't really care that much about Americans and girls aren't like, Oh my God, boys. I'm so, I don't even know. Are girls even boy crazy anymore? Like before, I don't know, the fifth grade or sixth grade teacher gets them. Are, are girls, are girls even boy? I really, I don't know. Are girls get crushes anymore? Is it like patriarchy? It's like, dude, you're in the second grade. I don't even know what it is. Can't even spell it. Um, but generally, and you've seen this girls, both in a sexual sense, they're not that interested in sex and they're not that interested in you guys. If they were, how, how do you want to count the ways? How do you want to measure this? Uh, texting ratios, response rates, flake rates. When's the last time a girl asked you out on a date? When's the last time a girl was feminine? Wait, okay, here's the thing. When's the last time a girl asked, well, what does a guy want? And under the premises of delivering that to him, it, it's, it's right. <laughs> It's not there. So it, they don't really have that much of an incentive, of whether it's OPEC, the drug lords, or women. And more recently, another thing, what if cartels were to diversify out of the co uh, commodity they sell? Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. This thing, this thing I think it's called the Black Curse. Um, <clears throat> it's an economic observation that uh, commodity-based economies and countries usually do horrible because they have this very precious commodity. They sell it. Uh, sometimes they're exploited for it. Sometimes people just conquer them. Uh, there's usually a boom. They rely on Western technology to do it. They don't keep it up. They become communist. Venezuela would be a perfect example of this. <clears throat> and so uh, what a lot of economists, it was about 15, 20 years ago, saying like the best thing for Saudi Arabia to do, for Venezuela to do, for um, Iraq, Iran to do, is to diversify their economies. And that's just smart for any country. You know, a lot of a lot of island uh, Caribbean nations, uh, they're dependent on coffee and banana exports. We should do uh, tourism, uh, things like that. So it's good to have a diversified economy in case the global price of whatever commodity that you're selling <clears throat> goes down. You can still have other people kept in employment and, and keep your economy going. So there is a wise economic reason to diversify out. So let's say Saudi Arabia diversifies out of oil and, and I don't know, they find um, coal or precious metals or tourism or whatever. They, they do a desalinization plant like California should have done 10 times 10 years ago. And then they become a really the new breadbasket of, of the world, <clears throat> whatever it is. Well, what will happen sometimes, you know, IT is a perfect example of it. Sometimes the new economy, the new industry you diversify into pays more. And then they're like, well, we ain't selling bananas no more. I think Panama might be a very interesting example. Panama has kind of become a financial services center with favorable tax rates, uh, a very uh, warm and welcoming environment to foreign investors. Uh, and whereas Panama, well, one time under Noriega was quite literally a, 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 a narco state. I'm sure they have tropical exports, uh, coffee and <clears throat> bananas and the like. But now they've diversified. Now they're like, this is way more profitable. We're not producing bananas no more. Well, that's the exact same thing that's happened now. Many thanks to technology. 
uh, beforehand in the in the dark times before the Industrial Revolution, women were like, you're the homekeeper and keep the kids out of dad's hair. That was it. Women were wives and mothers and homekeepers. That was it. But now, of course, with technology and sort of the diversification of different industries, one's made out of whole new cloth. It is no longer brute physical strength that determines whether or not you can farm or not. You could program. You could be an accountant. Uh, some things are traditionally held for men. Women can do now too. The military, become a cop, become a detective. Um, and so women are saying, hey, I don't have to be the housewife anymore. I have pretty much all the options in the world that men do, except for like line work or, you know, oil rigs. So, you know, stuff that requires actual hard work, you know, engineering or something like that. I kid, I kid. I, I know that one in five engineer majors are women. So thank you for the 20% of girls who are doing that. Uh, but they're starting to have other alternatives and options in order to live. Because let's be very clear. It was a transaction. I will provide you sex and femininity and support and kindness in theory if you take care of me and protect me. Love wasn't, that wasn't a thing. That wasn't in there. Well, now standards of living increase, technology increases, things are cheaper in real terms, and women can work in abundance for practically all the different fields and industry, and now they're diversifying out of that. And so now you're like, what? Well, I, I thought this is where the bananas were being sold. Oh, we no, we're in financial services. We're programmers. We're uh, we're boat engineers. We're whatever of the many things that women have diversified into. <clears throat> and so that has happened here as well. And and you, how many? It's all it's don't again. Don't shoot the economist. Go look at polling data of marrying age women. What's the number one thing? Career and education. And I'm not I'm not besmirching that. That that's their choice. That's your life. You go ahead and do that. That that's fine. I'm trying to get the guys to realize that. I'm trying to get them to see they don't want you that much. They don't need you that much. How many times, guys? How many times have you heard it? We don't need you. You got it. You got to take the cotton out of your ears. Put your little 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 Joey powder on their side and start thinking. Listen to them. They don't need you. And they prefer to do other things. Again, go look at, at uh, <clears throat> priority uh, polling of women of whatever age Pew decided to, to do that. And then finally, although this would not be terribly, there are not a lot of examples of this in the real world. Uh, what if a foreign state were to go to whatever, Iran, Iraq, Venezuela, and say, we'll pay for everything, all right? We'll pay for you. Just do this thing. And the only thing I could think of would be like Cuba and, and Soviet empire. Like the Soviet Union, we'll pay for all your crap. You could play a little tin pot dictator down there. Um, but we'll, we'll take care of you. All right. Well, the, the analogy would of course be the welfare state here where a government or a state would say, all right, you don't even have to diversify into bananas or computer programming or FinTech. We'll just pay for you, which again, that rarely happens unless there's always a reason that a vassal state would be paid by a by a uh, controlling uh, state. <clears throat> but it, it, what would happen? Well, if we're going to provide all your food, clothing, and shelter, and goods and services for you, Iraq, why would I like? Why would we waste our time in the desert where it's hot and dangerous, digging up oil? The, let's say the United States. Oh, we want to keep Iran at bay. Whatever. We'll, we'll just pay you for everything. Just stay here. Let us put some military bases. We'll give you all the money in the world. And the Iraqis would be like, all right, you think they'd be drilling for oil? Of course not. And they have no reason. To. That's work. And it's kind of the same thing here. With a welfare state. So you got jobs, right? <clears throat> they can work and support themselves. And with the welfare state, they, again, I don't know if you heard. Have you heard? How many of you have heard this? I don't need no man. Have you guys heard that? I don't know if any of you have heard that in your life. Have you heard that? Well, they, they certainly don't now, doubly so, because they have their own ability to work. And if, if there's just a bad little bit of luck, you got a welfare state. They can even have an entire family without you. They don't need you. It isn't a lie. And so uh, in not needing to print off, they, again, the supply drops off. It, 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 they just cut off the supply, just like Russia did to Germany. <laughs> 
Oh, it's going to be an interesting winter in Deutschland. It's their cult. Yeah. Yeah, Hans. It's their cult. So what can we conclude to this? All right. Um, one, I hope you could kind of see the parallels in a cartel because that's kind of what girls are becoming globally. Women are becoming a, a very uh, uh, conscious, crystallized operational cartel, right? Uh, just like the Iran in the United States or Iran and pretty much everybody. I don't think Iran gets a lot, along with a lot of people. They're not that interested in you. They don't have your best interests at heart. And if they are going to sell you oil, it's going to be begrudgingly or reluctantly, only because only they have to, but they don't have to. Uh, and consequently, because there's no longer a need to, they're going to produce the commodity of sex, kindness, femininity, in lower amounts. And even though you may begrudge that, you may be angry, it may drive some of you to take the Fred pill, which you please shouldn't do, you kind of got to respect the decision because what are you going to do? You're going to enslave them? Yeah, and, and I think what, what's ending up happening is most men are respecting that decision because, well, you have no other choice. <clears throat> I think most of you men are are not criminals. You're just slowly expecting, yeah, I'm not going to have sex. You're expecting not to get married. You're expecting not to uh, uh, you know, have kids, form families. Not all. Some of you still hold out. Some men, but you know, divorce rates are going. And, and let's talk about pricing. And you can even see it in pricing. So you can look at sex rates going down, especially for men. You could look at marriage rates going down. Uh, the divorce percentages, because the divorce rate is going down only because people are smart enough not to get married now. But those that do get married end up getting divorced at the same rates anyway. Uh, you could, I hate to sound so, again, don't shoot the economist. Um, commodity quality. You know, like there's different um, qualities of crude oil. There's like Western sweet. I guess sweet is good. Like it's, it's more refined. <clears throat> There's other like uh, crude or the shale oil or a lot of sulfur that doesn't sell as much. Well, look, look at it. How many kids do they have? Everyone's getting fat. You boys too. You aren't exactly bringing, uh, uh, you aren't exactly paying for this commodity in gold. You guys are showing up fat and ugly yourself too. <clears throat> Unemployed, weak, soy boy living at home. So I'm sympathetic to the women there, but Going back, uh, women are not feminine at all. They're mean, or increasingly so. Not all, of course, but increasingly so. They're overweight. That's the number one thing men are interested in women. They have, a lot of them have kids. Uh, and a lot of them are bringing debt for completely worthless degrees and end up becoming financial liabilities. So I'm not wrong. <laughs> I am, again, the messenger. Don't shoot the economist. This is happening. And just like, okay, there's an oil embargo. I guess there's no oil. And I think, of course, you have to take that. Like, well, there's no oil. There's a there's shortage. We, that's it. There's not enough water in Lake Mead. That's it. There's no oil. We can't just make it poof, show up. So uh, uh, as it pertains to like, well, what can I do? I think it's kind of what you guys are doing. You're just accepting it. A lot of you guys are going sexless. A lot of you going without date. A lot of you are not that excited about the prospects because you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, Walmart, there's a place to meet the girls. But what I'm trying to point out, the benefit to take from this is no, you're not, you're not insane. This is happening. And almost to, to, to a T as cartel economics plays out. And so if that, that, uh, uh, non, uh, sexual dating market, uh, system cartel economics parallels it so well uh it, it this was not anything under your control <clears throat> i mean of course yeah there is you could always go to the gym and blah 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 become a top 10 percent. i've talked about that before but if you're kind of confused no this is all natural this is simp this is all happening and the natural consequences is basically none of none of not none all right a significant percentage of women were not all that interested in having sex or having men be part of their life anyway. And now that they don't need you, that segment of the female dating market, what that would have normally traditionally been there, is gone. And consequently, if you would like to have sex, femininity, marriage love, the chances are lower and the price is going to be higher. And frankly, the quality is going to be less in terms of having, oh, happiness rates. Did you want me to, how many, where do you want, what stats do you want? 
Where do you want to, how do you want to measure pricing? How do you want to measure quality and quantity? How do you want to do it? <clears throat> so there you go. Uh, recommended books link down below. The Book of Numbers, Analyzing the ROI and the Pursuit of Women. Um, if you guys don't believe me, or would you like more data and statistics? Get this book. Just because women are not as interested in you as their their four, four mothers were uh, doesn't mean you're not here. You have to figure out something to do. And here's your statistics. So this is this is the stati this is the book. It's going to tell you what your chances are. And with that information, with that knowledge, all go to say, Then you can make an informed decision. Is this worth? And I'm I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's going to be like a, a two two full time jobs. You got your regular job and you got your other time job. You got to work out. You got to be in good shape. You got to learn to be funny. You got to dress. All this other stuff. It's a lot of work. You got to add. And the number one thing, if if you go in here and it, it tells you how, you got to ask girls out. You got to do all that. It's a lot of work. A lot, and not to mention the psychological, emotional. <clears throat> um, the mental energies that go into that. But then if you decide, no, that ain't worth it. The other book link below is the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex. And because, ladies, you are not that interested in marriage anymore, you're not that interested in family or men in general, I all this has a women's menu. There's the men's menu, the women's menu, and there's shareables and appetizers in a dessert menu that everyone can have. I strongly recommend because it's it's not... It's not just women that are leaving the, the marriage market and the sex market and the femininity market. By consequence, it's men too, right? Because you need two to get married, that kind of thing. <clears throat> uh, opposite sides of the same coin. So since we're all walking away from this market, we are no longer going to transact or transactions are going to be a lot less. There's a lot less interest in demand or there's, there's the same amount of demand. There's a lot less supply. Everyone's got to figure out what they got to do in their life. Absent the opposite sex. And since, unfortunately, Fred uh, passed away by taking his own life, I want to kind of like, hey, to prevent all of you, men or women, who are like, I can't find a man. I can't find a girl. Oh, I'm so sad. Okay, be sad. It is tragic. It, it It's horrible. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. I think it's the worst thing to happen to humanity. I mean, maybe the plague. Maybe slavery. Uh, maybe communism. Uh, there's not a lot things worse where the other half says we don't want to fall in love or be human anymore, frankly. Yeah, that's that's going to deal a blow. It's really going to deal a blow, right? But for whatever reason, God or nature put you here and you're here. And uh, whether you got a love person in your life or not, doesn't change the fact you got a life and you got to live it. And so I recommend that it's an optimistic book. Choose of, of probably hundreds of things I've listed there in the menu to make your life count. So there you go. All right. If you guys would kindly subscribe, um, because we're, we're closing in on a hundred thousand, at which point in time I will get a plastic thing. You get anything else? I don't think so. I think I just get the plastic thing from YouTube. It says, you got 100,000 subscribers. Yay. And there was much rejoicing. Um, let's go to the Super Chats here. Catch up. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, Hatton Clogs, 4334, two bucks. Cappy had the mini m and &M Blast from Sonic and Joe. Yeah, it is good. It is good. I always get chocolate. I believe some can do mint as well. Um, but I'm kind of 50-50 now on Sonic because you don't know if they're going to have ice cream or not. Because why should the ice cream making guy show up? He ain't getting married. He doesn't have a family. He's playing video games and living off of his stimmy checks. Hatton Clogs, 43, 34, five bucks. Go get you one. Thank you, Hatton Clogs. I might. It's a hot day here. I think I'm going to go swinging. The menu. You know what Cappy's going to choose, even though I got a girl? I'm going to choose to go on the swinging rope. And, and It's a Mountain Dew commercial. You swing on the rope and into the creek. I'm going to go on the swing. It's a hot day out here in Rapid City. I'm going to go and swim in the creek. 
Uh, be strong. Five bucks. M would most men be happier if they just stayed single, enjoyed something that starts with a P and rhymes with coin? <clears throat> it, uh, that's not what will determine whether you are happier. It is whether or not you give up hope. People who hope for something that is statistically li likely not going to happen or will never happen are miserable because they're never getting what they really want. Once you give up hope and really treat love as more of a lottery, like if I win it, I win it. <clears throat> you know, it'd be cool if it came along. Uh, I think people would be happier. I've talked about this before for the ladies, for the ladies side of the argument. Uh, one thing, maybe feminists can explain this to me. Okay, you're feminist. You don't want to do anything with men. Da, 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 that's your thing. Why don't you go fishing? Why are you still angry at men? Like, if you're like done with men, why don't, well, that should be free. It should be very liberating. And consequently, men, if you're done with women, that should also be very liberating. So I guess the MGTOW community and the feminist, like you would have, you would think they'd have the same, like this endeavor is too costly of my life and my resources and time and mental facilities. <clears throat> I'm going to go and live a different life. So I'm going to do all the fun things that I could do without family or child. And trust you me, I don't have kids and I do a lot of fun things. And there's a lot of, a lot of life out there to live. But the, the least of courtesies you could do yourself is stop worrying about it. But I don't see that still like, ah, women, ah, men. Rah. It's like, no one from the opposite sex is going to have anything to do with either of you because you're fat and ugly and, and negative. And and you certainly hate the opposite sex. At least some segments uh, do. So if you, this is why you read this book first. I can't, I cannot emphasize how important it is that you guys read if you're young so that you can decide, all right, is falling in love, having a family really that important to me? It is. Well, I better not be familiar with the stats and consequently the reverse engineered solution based on those stats on how I can statistically increase my chances. If you're like, that's too much. I, you know what? I, uh, my old man and my mom yelled at each other. They got divorced. It was, it was horrible. The taste of family and no, I dated a girl. It is heartbreak, whatever. I, I don't want to do it. <clears throat> uh, go then that will, it is not worth the investment and, and the commitment of your percentage of your time life to do it. But if you then decide that and you give up the hope, now go be free. Okay. Eat whatever the hell you want. Play your video games. Jerk off to the prawn. Um, go pay for the, the, uh, I was going to say pay for the super chats, pay for the, for the seeking arrangement. Uh, go, go travel the world. Anything. Uh, just go be free. I think a lot of girls as well on the other side would be a lot happier if they just, okay, you don't like guys. Got it. They're, they're scum. They're evil. You guys want to see it. I know it's Twitter. It's not necessarily the real world. Go search. I hate men. Oh my God. Gentlemen, you are not popular. <laughs> You're not popular. And I'm thinking like, well, instead of tweeting about it, why don't you just ignore guys and go have some fun? So, yeah, you got to give up the hope. You got to give up the hope. Uh, is that it? I think we're caught up. Uh, Nakama, five bucks, A plus on the shirt capster. Ah, Walmart special. Consider these dinner date reparations checking in on the channel after. Wait, Nakama, are you a girl? Uh, dinner date reparations checking in on a channel after a long while. Good analysis as per usual. Well, thank you, Nakama. I, I thought you were a guy. You were a girl. Uh, you don't have to pay reparations, dear. That's um, <clears throat> I don't believe in reparations. I just believe in learning from people. Like, yeah, we have a lot further to go. <laughs> a lot further to go based on time, money, and resources. All right, there you go. That's it. Okay, questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. The books are linked down below. Share with some younger people. Okay. I, th I, 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 I have a dream, a dream where young men and women are informed about the realities of one another. And we don't tell them pie in the sky, poppycock and boys and girls come up to each other around puberty. And the girls just say, we don't like you that much. Don't bother with us unless you're like this level. And the guys would honor that and respect that and give up their hope and their genetics and their biological programming and say, okay, cool. I'm going to go 
ride motorcycle across Asia. And I think everybody and guys would stop going to college in ridiculous numbers. Boys would get real jobs with real skills and, and real abilities. And you'd have your bachelor hut. And I think we'd all be a lot happier if we just acknowledged the general disinterest, at least women having guys. Okay. All right. That's it. See you guys later. Toodles. Oh, wait. At the last BGN, Bulgarian sub tendos. Hey, Cappy. Just got engaged to the most based and red pale girl on the Balkans after a 10 year testing period. Yeah. Or go over. That's another one. Find traditional gals. Always test, always wait, and know who you are sticking it in. Cheers. Well, um, congratulations. I hope I hope things go well. I hope things go well. So, all right. See you guys later. Toodles.